Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following corollary. For all real numbers x, if x is greater than or equal to 0, then there exists a positive integer n such that n minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than n. Now, in proving this corollary, we are going to rely on the following fact. For all real numbers x, there exists a positive integer n such that x is less than n. Now, in the book we're referencing, this fact is referred to as Theorem 2.4.3. The book, by the way, is Intro to Real Analysis by Bartle and Sherbert, 4th edition. Okay, now let's get into proving this corollary. Now, since we're trying to prove a state about every real number, give me an arbitrary real number. I'll call it x. And from here, we're trying to prove if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. And from here, our goal is to show that there is a positive integer that satisfies this inequality. Now, to do that, let's consider the following set. We define the set S to be the set of all positive integers n, such that x is less than n. Now, by theorem 2.4.3, there is at least one positive integer which satisfies this inequality. So, S is non-empty. So, S is a non-empty subset of the positive integers. If we recall, every non-empty subset of the positive integers has a smallest element. So, S has a smallest element. If you recall, this was called the well-ordering principle. And I'll say that t is the smallest element of s. Now, since t is the smallest element of s, of course, t is an element of s. Which means if we take n to be t, we have that t is a positive integer, and x is less than t. Remember, our goal is to find a positive integer which satisfies this inequality. And our claim is that t is a positive integer that satisfies this inequality. So we're going to show that t minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than t. Now, we already know that x is less than t. That's what we have here. So all that's left to show is that x is greater than or equal to t minus 1. Well, Assume for a contradiction, we instead have that x is less than t minus 1. Well then, we see that t minus 1 is greater than x, which is greater than or equal to 0. So, these two facts tell us that t minus 1 must be greater than 0. And surely, t minus 1 is an integer. So, this tells us that t minus 1 is a positive integer. And now, these two facts tell us that t minus 1 must then be an element of s. Because if we take n to be t minus 1, well, we have that t minus 1 is a positive integer. That's what we have here. And x is less than t minus 1. That's what we have here. However, since t is the smallest element of s, what this means is, is that t is less than or equal to every element of s. So in particular, since t minus 1 is an element of s, we have that t is less than or equal to t minus 1. But we know that t is greater than t minus 1. So these two facts give us a contradiction. Our assumption that x is less than t minus 1 led us to a contradiction, so we must instead have that x is greater than or equal to t minus 1. So we see that t minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than t. So now we have shown that this is true. Because if we take n to be t, well, yeah, t is a positive integer. That's what we have here. And t minus 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than t. That's what we have here. So we have shown that this is true. And so putting this together, we started with an arbitrary real number x. And we show that if x is greater than or equal to 0, then this is true. Since x is arbitrary, this means for all real numbers x, if this is true, then this is true. So we have proven exactly what we wanted to prove. So this completes the proof.
And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.